top of the time. This is tea time. Making a difference. One cup at a time. So be sure to grab your tea, grab a seat, and tune in to Miss Liz. Tea time. Tea time. Making a difference. One cup at a time. Oh, welcome to Tea Time with Miss Liz. That's right. Miss Liz is running a little late. We have some energy in the house today. I'm not sure what's going on. So if you hear a couple of little background noises and all that stuff, it's just the universe doing its magic stuff with Miss Liz again. So I want to welcome everybody for joining me today on Tea Time with Miss Liz. And today I have Doc Tuvash Goldfine in the house, and she's all the way in Israel. So that's right. We're going to be traveling today. So this afternoon, Israel, tonight, United States. That's just how we do it, right, with this magical little rocking chair that Miss Liz has in her tea room. So before we get started, we're going to get you over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel. Ring that little doorbell and check out all the incredible interviews that are there. You can watch them at any time in your home, in your car, at an event. Uh, share it with a neighbor if you feel it resonates with somebody because that's what tea time is all about. It's about sharing is caring and, and sharing is healing. So we all make a difference when we share that cup of tea. Now, today's tea time that we'll be talking about is chronic pain and autoimmune, aut autoimmune disease recovery. And the tea that we'll be serving is tonight's tenacious, evolving, and authentic. So that's the tea we're receiving today in the house. So if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, please leave them in the comment section or directly send them to Miss Liz and I will get them out during the conversation if they're related to today's conversation. So before we get started, we're going to do all the good stuff. We're going to do a disclaimer. We're going to do bio and then we're going to get Dr. Tuvash in here and we're going to have some good strong cup of tea, Miss Liz style. Disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live Show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All tea time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It's significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forms only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutic advice unless we have a professional in the house. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panel's discussion, you may freely contact Ms. Liz through my email at bookiemissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, regular days for tea time are Thursdays, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you see a tea time on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's a surprise, rescheduled, or a special tea time that has popped up and needs to be on tea time. So now a little bit of my about my guest. Well, today I have Dr. Tuvash Goldfine is is a dedic is dedicated to mind body education and healing of TMS, which we'll be talking about chronic pain relief, autoimmune diseases, and stress illnesses. She's a specialist in neuro neuroplastic methods using the state of the art PRT pain reprocessing therapy to help many patients recover. Weekly on her Facebook live broadcast, she provides a platform for doctors, therapists, scientists, and authors to share their insights and expertise, fostering a community dedicated to healing. Dr. Tuvash talks with individuals who have successfully healed from chronic pain and autoimmune diseases, sharing real life stories, success stories, and inspiring hope for others facing similar challenges. Dr. Tuvash is 40 years of practice in chiropractor and rehab gives her greater knowledge and more insight to how the mind and body heals. So let me get her in here and let's spill some tea together. Welcome, Dr. <laughs> Tuvash. Happy to be drinking tea with you, special lady. <laughs> it took us a while to get here, but we're here, right? Yeah. So let's get started. I'm going to take you way back. So who was Dr. Tu Tuvash 
as a little girl, and who is she now? So, yeah, so tova means good in Hebrew, tova. Tova oh, wow. means good. Like people say boker tov or lana tov or good night or so tova. It's, yeah, it's it's a Hebrew word, but I was born in Philadelphia as Terry and I changed oh. my name at some point, took on a Hebrew name, which means good. And I try to live up to that. Um, so I was born in Philadelphia and in my 50s, I'm now 67. And in my 50s, I decided to have a paradigm shift and move to the Middle East with uh, a daughter of mine and then another daughter and came with my son-in-law. And now I'm here with my grandchildren and my family. And we're not going to get into politics. We're going to talk about healing right now. <laughs> <laughs> so who were you as like a little girl? Like, what did you... Uh experience well, I, relate to, I relate to you miss liz because you know we all have our trauma we all have our drama i'm a grandmother i was married you know once or twice so we all um you know like take our ball and chain and it really depends on how high we carry it and where where uh, how we let me say it this way we're not here to blame our parents you know, because blame doesn't get you anywhere. We're here to be respond, sub, responsible. And I think parents do the best they can. And ultimately, I'm a spiritual person. I live a God-centered life like you a bit. And I really believe that uh, forgiveness is the way and gratitude is the way and compassion is the way. So I grew up a little bit rough times as well. And um, kind of was I kind of consider myself a flower that grew out of a pot of manure and I'm blossoming and my parents did the best they could, but I was searching for God and searching for Jesus and searching for gurus. And I was always searching for something like, and um, that led me to go to college. I dropped out. I traveled to Israel. I did this, I did that. And then I eventually in my twenties, late twenties, went to chiropractic school. Um, my mother had multiple sclerosis growing up. I was 11 when she got sick. And so that changed the trajectory of my life. Um, and I was always sort of wondering why she got sick and, you know, why her? And so I, I understood a lot going to chiropractic school. Chiropractic is, um, it's like a degree, like a dentist is a doctor of dentistry, a doctor of the teeth. Um, you know, a podiatrist is a doctor of the feet. I'm I have a doctorate in um, conditions of the spine or the muscular system or the nervous system. And I, it's like a six or seven year program. I went to school in South Carolina, um, originally from Philadelphia. I think I said that. And um, it's, it's an amazing career. It's an amazing thing. You work on people, you use your hands. It's no medicine, no surgery. I'm very gentle chiropractor. I do a lot of massage. So all that led me to wanting to understand pain. And, you know, yeah, pain, you get kicked or you put your hand on the fire. That's pain. You pull your hand away from the fire. You put a Band-Aid on. Band-Aids heal, by the way. You know, you get better. But there's a lot about chronic pain, pain that doesn't go away from surgery or medicine you know, there's enormous amount of chronic pain in the world. And I'm not going to throw statistics at you, but I am going to say that chronic pain is not normal. The body heals. The body gets sick and the body heals. The body's constantly, constantly regenerating, constantly. You know, we see, we get a cut, it heals. We even watch it heal. I mean, like, it, it, people know about the human body. I mean, I asked the question, how does... You know, how do we make babies and a sperm and an egg come together and make a baby? Like this human body knows what it's doing yeah. without me telling it. My heart's beating, my stomach's digesting, my liver's functioning, my kidneys are processing. It has an innate intelligence. And so that led me to love chiropractic, which is about the nervous system, like really getting things working, having your innate intelligence, the inner ability, 
for your nervous system to work. And then I thought years later, I started to think, well, wait a minute, the disc is not the problem. The muscle's not the problem. It's something in the brain, Liz. It's something in the brain. The brain has learned pain. The brain has become habitually protecting. And most chronic pain is the body protecting. We feel punished, but it's the body protecting. Now I'm going to dialogue with you. So that's that's the elevator pitch. I, and you know, I really like that because we don't talk about chronic pain, right? It, it's a taboo sub subject. A, a lot of people will say, uh, it's just in your head. It's just, you know, you just need more rest. You just need more food. You just need to change your diet. You know, uh, the chronic pain is the body protecting. And I'm glad that you're bringing that up because it's something that we need to get out there. Right. Uh, and we talked about it in conversations between us before today as well about, how the mind takes care of the body, how it protects the body and that. And that's why I really wanted to get you on here was because this is a conversation that we don't have in today's world is how to protect our bodies. And how to, or to understand, to yeah, or to understand why the body's protecting us when it feels wrong, it feels counterintuitive, it hurts. But we have a lizard brain Remember, this brain is a piece of flesh. It's a very, very sophisticated machine. We're not talking about like somebody living in there. This is a machine. This is a piece of really like a brilliant organ that has come from however long the world has been. We're all debating that. <laughs> Depending on what religion you were debating when the world started. But more important is our brain has developed brilliantly different than in animals and it was a protective brain and it's been developed I, i'm not going to get into that because it's more scientific but our brain when it protects us when i put my hands on a fire that's my brain yep. thank god thank god i cross the street and there's a red light and i stop and i think oh and my brain so we have to think about the power of the brain and what it does to protect us. We also have to understand our unconscious mind. The brain, let's say, is our conscious mind. And the unconscious mind is like, we think it's like something deep inside of us, like some kind of, you know, like Mary Poppins bag or something of thoughts. But the unconscious mind is the body. And this has been scientifically uh, research, the unconscious mind is the body. We call it unconscious mind. And there are thoughts that we think, oh, it's my brain thinking. It's the unconscious mind and a whole nother set of neuroscience that kind of creates the thoughts from our experiences, our behaviors, our actions. And we may not be able to control that but you and I know we can always control our response to anything. This is power. Right. And the, the research is, which is, this is the bittersweet. We have a, a thousand thoughts a day, let's say. Now, 999 of them are repetitive and 995 of them are negative. Now you say, well, wait a minute, then I'm, how can I beat that? Well, that's just our lizard brain protecting us. Wait, hold on, protect, what, stop. It's, and yet we can affect that. We can change those thoughts by being aware, by accepting, by understanding the dynamics, something we call the matrix. Like we understand and we can control our mind, which is a whole nother topic. Because the mind and the body are connected. And that's this neuroplastic world and this healing that I've uh, evolved into helping people heal themselves. And you and I know we've met people that have healed cancer, that have healed disease. And we think, oh, well, you know, they went to meet the Dalai Lama or they, they somehow saw Jesus walking on water. And they, they obviously had some kind of, you know, past life or... No, it is possible. And I'm meeting thousands of people who are healing everything from cancer to multiple sclerosis, even which my mom had. 
to chronic pain. And they're doing it by changing the neural circuits in their brain, like the phantom leg. What did he do? God forbid he got his leg cut off, but he's still feeling pain because the pain is here. We process pain here. We feel it here. I feel it here. Now, acute pain is processed somewhere else. Chronic pain is processed in the amygdala. I'm, I'm ba- making it very basic for the listeners. It's processed in a part of the brain where also fear and anger and sadness and grief. These are core emotions. These are core emotions that we all feel. And what we've discovered is that pain, chronic pain, is, is an emotion. I, and I, I like I, to dialogue. I, I, I really like that, uh, you know, because the reason why I ask you, who you were as a little girl, because it usually gets us into the fields that we are when we become adults, right? And the story of your mom brought you That's into true. brought you into the field that you are in today, you know, and it brings the understanding. Um, and I love that you brought up Mary Poppins because Mary Poppins had that little suitcase of magical things that did make the children understand stuff like t- a spoonful of sugar, put the medicine down. So they had to take their medicine, whether they refused to take it, but their bodies were saying that they needed the medicine to heal. Right. And I love that you brought that analogy in because for the younger generations that are listening to tea time, they can understand that you know, we, we have this toolbox, we have this suitcase yes. that we need to dig into sometimes in order to heal ourselves. And yeah. uh, we yeah. had a que- we had a question here for you. Do you believe that there's enough research yes. done on the brain? Well, for my field, healing, I mean, look, there's neuroscience, there's the brain, there's understanding, you know, uh, I, I'm not a neuroscientist, but I also get a little involved in quantum physics, which is about the brain and like being the placebo and about energy. And this is a field, if I could, go, I mean, I'm 40 years doing what I'm doing. I'm 67 years old and aging gracefully like you. Um, but I want to say to you that I would love to be able to answer that. But I'm not a neuroscience, but it's fascinating about the brain to even understand it relating to yourself and thoughts it's a fascinating topic and it should be something that our kids learn in school. Yeah. We should have yoga in the schools. Yeah. We should have nutrition in the schools and we should have learning the brains. So that was a good question. And I don't I, really have that answer. And I, and I think it's important, right? To have these conversations. And that's why I like to bring this to the table at tea time is the education, right? Uh, for all the teachers out there, all the educators out there that are listening to tea time, you know, maybe this is something we can bring into the classrooms, you know, uh, have that conversation about the brain and the brain power and understanding the brain because br- the brain leads to so many different diseases and illnesses as well. You know, can you imagine this organ and it gets all this power and all this bad rap and good rap and God forbid there's a brand new surgery. I mean, like it's, it's really kind of like the center of who we are, but it's, it's, it's just really an organ. It's a piece of fancy flesh. Think about it. We feed the brain. We de- we develop the brain by our experiences, our thoughts, our traumas, our dramas. And what I'm promoting here, and if you walk away with anything, is something called neuroplasticity. So that, to, to that question, neuroplasticity is that the brain can change. The brain can, it's molded. We can change it. And that's what, what I'm saying, that we the mind and body are are connected, and once we get sick, we can heal. Once we have a thought, we can change it. We have that power. We're not controlled by this organ. We have enormous, enormous power, and that's what you're doing for all these years in your show. You're empowering people, and I came into my world wanting to empower people. In fact, I'm not a great businesswoman because I want you to be the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> you to be the healer. So it's probably like, wait a minute, but like, but I do counsel. I do counsel people in this neuroplasticity. So that's what the man did with the phantom leg. Yeah. He said, no, doc, I'm feeling the pain in my leg. And the doc's like, the pain is here. He's like, I'm feeling it in my leg, but your leg is gone. Oh, I have to create a new habit. 
I have to create a new language. I have to build a new neural circuit that the pain is in my brain. Yeah. So we build a new neural circuit by learning new habits. That's what neuroplasticity is. And people are healing pain and disease from having a different relationship with their body. So it's fascinating. It's fascinating my work. It really is. And I, you can see how excited I get. I don't want to talk so much. Well, let, I, let me just say, tell you what TMS means. TMS is shortened for tension myonoro, myonoro, excuse me, tension myonoro syndrome. And it was coined by a Dr. John Sarno, who a lot of people know who he is. He has a, he wrote a book in 30 languages about healing back pain, started with back pain. He was a doctor of physical medicine in New York for many years, for like 40, 50 years. He recently died at 96, about 10 years ago. But he started to see that this person had this x-ray and they weren't in pain. And this person had the same x-ray, but they were in pain. And he began to put two and two together. And he came out, you know, maybe 20 years ago, I don't know the dates right now, in kind of challenging the doctors and saying, wait a minute, this person doesn't need surgery. This person is, is getting out of pain from physical therapy or chiropractic. Like, so we started to understand that the x-ray and the MRI were not indicative of the pain and that this is very interesting to the listeners. Who you are will determine how you relate to pain because of your trauma or your drama will determine your relationship with pain. One quick story. This is a true story. and I'll send anybody the research. Anybody can email me for anything I say. I'll try to back it up because research is important. Yes. It's a true yes. story. There's a man in, in England, in the UK. He was a construction worker. And he was working with his buddies. And he was they were shooting nails and doing all things with planks. And, and he gets a nail in his foot. Liz, he gets a nail in his foot. And he screams and he freaks out. He's screaming. They cannot calm him down. They're all really upset. They all stop working. They take off their, 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 their hard hats. They go to the first aid. They try to do something. They try to like calm him down. He's really, really freaking out. They call the ambulance and the ambulance, they give him a shot. No relief. Liz, they take him into a surgery room. They take him into the ER. They cut off his boot. The nail is between his toes. This is his response to pain. He sees the nail and he is, no way he could be calmed down. They begin to understand that soldiers from the war, if they were get shot, they were happy because they would be coming home and they wouldn't experience pain. Another story they did research, it's called The Tale of Two Nails. Guys doing construction in another part of Europe. He's uh, shooting nails and he feels, he feels something a little bit in his face. Two weeks later, he goes to the dentist. They find a, nail, a nail piercing his brain. He has no pain. So what we discover is our experience of pain is determined by our emotional relationship with sickness, with growing up. Okay, my mother didn't have a thermometer in the house, so I wasn't like attached to being sick. Yep. You know, so we all have our own experience and this determines what might happen, how we deal with pain. We know when a little kid gets hurt, he looks to see what his mother is doing before he cries. I say no more. I rest my case. <laughs> pain is an emotion. Pain is an emotion. Acute, a chronic pain is an emotion. Acute pain, it hurts, but the body heals. Over yeah. and over again. Well, it's like going to emergency, right? And they ask you, what's your pain level at? And you put two people with the same thing that has happened to them, the same car accident, for an example. And one says it's at a four and the next one says it's at a nine. It's, it goes right back to that emotion, right? Of how 100%. you were growing up, you know? And, and then you look at somebody and you're, they should be a 10. Like they're like, there's blood all over. They're like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you can see like a bone is out or something. And you're like, why are they not in pain? Why are they not complaining? Mm -hmm. And it goes right back to the emotions. And we don't talk about the emotions of the body. 
we talk about the pain of the body, but we don't talk about the emotions. Right, exactly. And, you know, it sounds a little woo-woo. And I thought that very, very beginning, but then I began to study the neuroplasticity and understood that, and they, they, they do some studies on how emotions are processed. And I can, when I feel angry, it affects my flight and flight mechanism. When I feel scared, I start to sweat. So that's the fight and flight. So understanding the neuroplasticity is understanding your, your um, sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight and flight. Yep. And then your parasympathetic, which is your rest and digest. And we go, we all go back to these different places. We get into fight or flight. We're freaked out, but then we calm down. And then sometimes we don't calm down. Sometimes we're staying in fight or flight and we're like triggered. And this is another way that we begin to understand how our, what our relationship is with pain and disease. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I want to talk about the difference between chronic pain and autoimmune disease. What, yeah. What's the difference? Yeah. Well, I like I'm, you know, I work, I study with many amazing doctors in America and Europe and most doctors agree with me. And I come out like on a limb a little bit with this. Um, Cause I've just met so many people who have healed everything. It doesn't mean your disease can't be healed. It means because it's not about the symptom, it's about your relationship with the disease. So regarding autoimmune, I believe everything from cancer to MS to any kind of disease is an autoimmune, meaning the body is attacking itself. Inflammation is the basis of most diseases because when we're anxious or stressed, our brain and body begin to create an inflammatory response. This has been studied. I work with um, an amazing doctor. His name is Dr. David Hanscom. He's a spinal deformity surgeon that stopped doing surgery. And now he's in this work full time. And um, I learn a lot from him. And it's it feels good to work with a doctor. It feels good to be. But most of us are therapists or are different kind of doctors or coaches. But there's a handful of doctors who understand this. So in answer to your question, Autoimmune is autoimmune. The body becomes uh, automatically immune. Like you, it's not, it's, it's attacking. It's immune. It's like not protecting itself. It's not protecting against the attack. It's giving into the attack. And it's respond, it's react. It's like a reaction. Yeah. So autoimmune, so this, this, is, this is interesting to explain when people get really sick, it's because their fight and flight stays in, in attack mode. And then they start to develop a condition. You know, anything from, you know, fibromyalgia to chronic fatigue to food sensitivities to IBS to headaches. I mean, if there is something structural wrong, you break a bone, please go to the doctor, go to the yeah. hospital. Yeah. Do not go to your chiropractor. If you, God forbid, have a tumor. Okay, I am not against chemotherapy. I have a friend who was on my broadcast. She had a tumor that wrapped around her heart that literally cut off the vein, the artery to her brain. But you know what her body did? Her body created a bypass. Oh. And blood went to her brain. Like the body, and I've heard this over and over again, the body... The body, the cervical artery gets cut off. Your body will start to automatically create another pathway to get brain to your to blood to your brain. I wanted to bring this woman up because she saw that she had this tumor, but she thought she's going to go get chemo. And she actually went to get chemo, but she decided to call it chemo ecstasy. She was going to decide how she was going to respond to that chemo. So what happens? We're going to get chemo. We're already freaking out. We're already like our hair, our body, and it's very stressful. So how can you have a positive experience with something? Label it positive. Okay, I'm going to be healed from this chemo. So I made that point because I'm not against medicine. I'm all about integrating the mind and body. We need medicine. We need this, but if you're not responding to the medical model, 
do not lose hope. Do not give up. And most doctors are not talking to you about this. And they know neuroplasticity. They know this. And I'm not bashing doctors at all. I am saying find an educated doctor, be an educated patient, and know that there's a mind and body component to every condition, to every pain. And autoimmune, it's, you know, it's a suffering, it's a struggling, but there is a reason and you have a choice. I want people to know they have a choice and there's so much education and so much, my world is so big, even though I'm already really approaching 25% of the people. But for example, if we talk about how sick we are, we're going to be we're just sick. going to get sicker. <laughs> if we talk about, if we accept that we're sick, okay. Or accept that I have, okay. But I'm going to meditate. I'm going to journal. I'm going to try to work my, I'm going to try. There are so many different things. And I'm going to take chemo all. Also, I'm going to go take my Advil. But I want to know why I have a headache. I want to understand what caused my headache today. I want to be empowered. That's all I'm Absolutely. saying. Doc, that's, and you're bringing up some really good points. And I've said this over the last five years, being on Tea Time and being with my guests. We're not having these conversations. And we're getting diagnosed by doctors. And we're just told to take this medication or to try this way or try that way. But we're not understanding the diagnosis. We're not understanding the illnesses. We're not understanding that it is our own body that can heal our body. You know, uh, you, you've been watching my story with diabetes and I'm, I'm fighting diabetes. I'm not letting diabetes win with me. Uh, yes. I'm going to have the roller coaster of up and down, but when we feed the illness and the, the disease, we get sicker. We, we, we get deeper into it because we're telling our body that we're no longer opening the avenue to understanding what's going on with our body. Right. Well, thoughts, goes, are, thoughts are, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Thoughts are chemical. This is the quantum physics world, the placebo. And we all know about the placebo. Isn't that kind of crazy that somebody could take a pill and feel better and it was a sugar pill? I mean, thoughts right. are chemical and thoughts are energy. And that's what you're saying. Doesn't mean you should deny you don't feel good. Doesn't mean that you should, but that the thoughts make a difference. You're so so clever you're so wise miss liz you know doc these are the conversations that i like having on on tea time because we need the education out there we need the research you've said it even a few minutes ago if you guys want the research you're going to send the research to them to back up when you know, there you, you know but we we as individuals have the resources at our fingertips and we're not looking into the research we're not asking why is this happening to my body? Why is this happening to my thoughts? Why do I feel depression today? You know, uh, because we're not understanding how strong our brain cells are and how the heart bypass, like I've, I'm really happy that you brought that story up about chemo, uh, you know, and the bypass because the heart and the brain are connected. And we're not talking about this in today's world where we should be having these conversations. I could talk about fashion and, and dress up and all that all day long too, but I want to get the education out there that can change a life, that can save a life. And, and, and this is why I wanted you here was because Absolutely. I want people to understand that even the word matrix, you're going to go and think of the movie right away, matrix, instead of going and looking and understanding your own body and mind. And that's what the matrix was doing, was telling us that it was within us. That we can feel our percent You are the doctor. You are the therapist. And doctors, look, you want to find a doctor who will treat you, not your symptoms. Because your symptom, it's just like my symptom. But we're two totally different souls and minds and bodies. And there are doctors doing this. And the doctors that are not, I'm not about blaming. They're yeah. doing the best they can. But, you know, a lot of doctors, I remember the doctors I study with, they, they talk about they got like an hour of pain in medical school. They got like an hour of nutrition. I mean, food is our medicine. So, again, this is not about bashing doctors. This is about educating patients to walk in and say, Doc, I have a list of questions. And I'm asking for your time and attention. 
please, you know, and, and listen, find the doctors that will because they exist. Well, I think that the issue too is the passion, right? Some people go into these fields with no passion and no purpose. So they're just giving you the medication and saying, this is what we went to school with. This is what should be working, you know, and it's okay to question your doctor and say, well, you know what? I don't think that that medicine is working. I don't think I should be taking this. It's okay to question people. It's okay to ask those questions and have, mm -hmm. and build a relationship with your doctor. If you're not having a relationship with your doctor, it doesn't mean that you go out on a date and take them out for lunch or anything. It means Getting to understand your doctor, if they're the right fit, like that's what you're saying, doc, is you're saying that, you know, find the right fit. And, you know, doctors are short and scarce because of what has happened in the last couple of years. So we really have to start paying attention to who we're allowing to give us stuff and to feed ourselves as well. It's like putting a candy bar in us or taking a piece of carrot. You know, it's the decision and choices that we make. And that's why I really wanted to have you here is because you, you do the mind, body, and soul. And I really like what you have on your website. And it says, be your own doctor. And that no, just means my, be your own advocate. Like, let, let's no, find a doctor within yeah. us, you know? Yeah, it's, okay. it exists. It exists. It's healing. It's healing us all the time. We, we like forget about the constant inner healing that's happening and that your heart's beating, your stomach's digesting, you're not telling it what to do. It's and, and then when something gets sick, look, we react, we get scared. It's fearful. Look, pain means something is wrong. Pain yeah. means danger, but not this kind of pain. And we all know when we get hurt, God forbid, when we respond, it's always a much better outcome than we react. We know that. And we know that we could go down the rabbit hole with like, oh, this happened, that happened. And I took this pill. I took that pill. Do you know your body is a pharmacy? Miss Liz, when I inhale and I exhale a deep exhale, like a diaphragmic exhale, and even actually breathing through your nose, which is better. They say your mouth is for talking. Your nose is for breathing. This is what my breathing people tell me. Anyway, um, you know, breathing through my nose deeply, do you know I'm creating cannabis? I'm creating opioids. I'm creating heroin. I'm creating, of course, we know endorphins. I'm creating enormous anti-inflammatory, enormous anti-tension just by my exhale. I mean, the power of the breath. And let me say that the word for, for soul in Hebrew is called neshama, which is the same root as the word for breath. It's very spiritual. And God is very much about the breath. So even if you want to bring God into this picture of healing, I mean, really, because there is an energy and a divine, and I know you and I agree on that. And so the most important thing is for you to know how much you have in your Mary Poppins bag. You can journal, you can meditate, you can exercise, you can pray, you can um, study you, gratitude. Do you know that compassion is chemical? You know that self-compassion changes, they've said it changes the neurons when I can look in the mirror and say, I love you. Do you know how hard it is for all of us to look in the mirror and say, I love you? Now, I always say, can you love the part of you you don't like? Because if your brain hears that you are at least accepting the part of you you don't like. I don't say you have to like your tumor, yeah. but if you can accept that your body created it to protect you, there's a, a loving awareness that's happening and the body's reacting and responding differently. So we're talking about love. We're talking about awareness. We're talking about these like oogie boogie, like, new age things that are science because everything came from science the new age world came from science <laughs> you know well and it's it, you know a lot of people i galit from israel she was in switzerland when i first met her but she's in israel now uh and she had this and she has this project called i love me and she sent me this magnet and she says, Liz, I want you to look at yourself and say, I love me. It took me two and a half weeks to say it to myself. And then I was 
questioning myself why it took me so long to say that I love myself. Because we're not taught self-love. We're not ta taught self-care. We're only taught to nurture and take care of others and be kind to others. But we have to be kind to ourselves first in order so to help true. others, right? So, and it goes so right true. back to the mind, the body, and the soul is what we're feeding it, what we're saying to it, what how we're talking to it. And yes, of course, you, you're going to have hard days and you're going to say those days, well, you know, well, I, you know, I could be a little bit better with myself today, you know? But a lot of a lot of things that I was taught at a very young age by my Oma was to reflect, reflection, recharging, releasing. Those were all things that had to happen from within myself. I couldn't reflect on others. I couldn't recharge others and I couldn't release others. Now, letting go of others, that's different. But I mean, it had to come from within. It had to be what, what was strong and what was making me continue on. You know, and we've talked about this uh, many times, you know, that believing in the spiritual divine universe, like even before we went live, we had some issues with sounds and whistlings and water sounds. And, you know, it was like the universe was saying, not yet. We're going to get there, but not yet. Just pace yourself, <laughs> girls. We're going to get there. Or you that know? You're human. You're human. And don't expect perfect. Perfect is God. And don't you dare try to play God. <laughs> right i want to get into your tea because your tea is really interesting for me it's tenacious evolving and authentic and those are three words that i really love so tell me why you gave me those words doc oh my god you asked me the most amazing questions i love you're such a great host um tenacious well first of all i'm born in july so i'm a cancer and there's like you talk about the crab being tenacious and i'm a, I'm a bit tenacious i'm a bit like I can be annoying. <laughs> I can be a bit annoying, a bit obnoxious, a bit like, like much. But it's it's if I channel it to, to serve me, it can it can be wonderful, wonderful quality. So I am tenacious and a little bit relentless and not giving up. Um, authenticity. I I I didn't own I didn't own that word for many years. I had to own that word and I had to fall and get up and fall and get up and get bloody noses emotionally and, you know, get married once or twice and <laughs> really learn, learn um, about my relationships with myself and people in my life. And um, I think I wasn't being authentic. I think I was being someone that I thought I should be. And none of us, are, we've all gone through that. We've all taken a bullet for that part of our lives. And that was uh, a big part of my life because I didn't maybe see it growing. I didn't see authenticity growing up. So I had to learn um, the hard way, not from a tumor, thank you, God, but from relationships. So it took me like in my 50s to really feel that I could really be authentic and honest. I call it like honest with like naked with my clothes on, I call it. You know, intimacy is not like in the bedroom. It's really being able to talk to somebody. And part of me is shy and part of me is introverted. You wouldn't believe it. And I think that's this part of me that is insecure. And, you know, I go on live each week and I do a show, but I'm behind it. I'm really insecure. And I think, well, this is a part of me. Hey, I always like to say, Miss Liz, I'm very secure about being insecure. I like that. You know? <laughs> I'm very, you know, and I think, I think owning up to that we're human and that we fart and burp like anybody else, I think it's very important. Um, and that's authenticity. Well, and, I think um, uh, authentic, uh, authenticity comes from maturity, right? You say that five times, this is, <laughs> you know, it comes with maturity because we have to go through the ups and downs in life. We have to go through the falls. You know, um, for me, it was many years as well, Doc, to understand what authentic really meant. You know, it wasn't about being liked and loved and, and being on the spotlight or anything. It was being authentic with myself yeah. and being mature, coming to the maturity. And, I, and that's why I love those words that you gave me. Uh, because I was just like, wow, she gets it. She gets it. Like she got the maturity. She got the, you know, 
And, you know, evolving, that is something that I see that you do with your work. You evolve, you change, you have the recovery, you have the tools and the research to back it up. And that's what evolving is all about. So tell me why, what you think of evolve. Well, it's very good. I'm so happy you asked me. You know, I have a friend who's a, a colleague who's a has a podcast. It's in Hebrew, but it's called Evolve or Die. And oh. I just love that because if we don't evolve, we will wither away. And that's really even about with anything in the world. We don't have to change ourselves. We don't have to change who we are. We're born, we grew up, and it's at, at, from age one to seven, we're developing who we are, and then we're coasting. And then so many of us are into self-help, myself as well. You, we're always doing this and changing and evolving. But ultimately, it's about evolving or growing into, into a better you or accepting you. And I actually... Um, I love the 12 step work and I love it because they, you have to accept who you are in order to change. And sometimes acceptance is a little bit, okay, that might be hard for me because of all the things, but evolving is movement yeah. and movement is growth and movement is healing. And so I love the word evolve and, um, for all those reasons. Well, and it all aligns. And that's what I loved about your T because the T, the E and the A, it all evolve. It, it all connects, right? Ten and tenacious is a good word. You know, when I first heard that word, I thought people were insulting me. And I was like, like, what is that word? Like, what does that word <laughs> yeah. mean? Yeah. Well, I had to understand it, right? And that's what life is about. We have to understand our brains. We have to understand our hearts. We have to understand our thoughts because our thoughts do make a difference in our lives and really do create a, a healing process and recovery and stuff like that. Uh, you do offer some incredible services. Do you want to share a little bit about those services? Yeah. Well, first there? of all, I, yeah, I, you know, it's like to all the people that, you know, like, well, why do I have to pay for healing and why isn't it covered under my insurance? And I'm heartbroken about that. You know, I had to go to lots of therapy to learn how to charge and value myself. So it's, and I always say to my, my clients, if you, if I were to give this to you for free, do you think you would get better? Do you think you would value the work? Do you think you would be accountable? So there's always this interesting thing about healing and a business. And I remember all the stress I went through after graduating chiropractic school. And then I had to go take business courses and I was like, no, no, no. So I am still in a bit of conflict and evolving with a business, but it is a business. I have a therapy business. And what I do is I internationally consult with people who want to learn the tools and methods of self-healing. I teach them to be the doctor. I'm like, at some point, you're going to not need me. You be the doctor. Save your money. But I do have a consulting practice and we meet on Zoom, I do it internationally. And here's the thing, I, I wanna say this about the financial part of it. There are so many resources and so much, you know, Dr. Google, there was so much out there. And the first thing I say is take this, take the book, read this, watch these movies, you do it. And there are a lot of people who self heal. They read a book, their symptoms change. This is possible. And I was like, you do it. Yeah. But I know yeah. for me, I tried to budget for 20 years and could not budget and kept messing up at the bank and going into the negative and doing this and doing that. And finally, I hired a financial advisor because I needed that support. Yep. Now I go to the gym and I work out. I don't need that support, but I need when I study languages, I, I cannot do it. I'm smart, but I'm not good at languages. I have to hire someone. I have, to, I have a financial advisor because yep. Yep. numbers stress me out. I get triggered around numbers, you know? <laughs> so here's the thing. Please go and heal yourself. I will send you enormous information. Email me. But if you need a coach, you need a cheerleader, you need a kick in the backside, 
then let me guide you. I will not fish for you. I will not feed you. I will not give you the fish, but I will take you and make you fish. And then you will not need me because that's my job. Yeah. Not to create codependence, to create interdependence. So I have a consulting business internationally. And I always give complimentary calls. If somebody wants to just talk with me, listen to me, I meet you on a Zoom, complimentary. You want to work with me, we figure it out. I do have insurance coverage because of my chiropractic degree. So there sometimes can be coverage depending on your private insurance. Um, locally, I have a chiropractic practice, a small practice. I'm a very gentle chiropractor. And I believe in chiropractic because the body was made to move. And when things get stuck, sometimes you need a few adjustments. But I'm also about stretching, yoga, breathing, getting to the gym, walking the stairs, not taking elevators, parking far away. Why do we park in the parking lot, parking space closest to the store? <laughs> I think about parking far away in honor of my mother who was crippled. I do think that way. And you don't need a crippled mother to think that way, but fit fitness in your kitchen can be a gym. Yep. You don't have to join the gym. Your kitchen can be a gym. I can tell you 20 things to do in your kitchen. So I'm all about helping you find things. I just interviewed a woman who healed from a horrible disease called CRPS. They call it the suicide disease. Anyway, she healed after many years of chronic pain. She wrote a book called Unwinding Pain, Efficient and uh, Inexpensive Ways to Heal. So I'm always doing that. Please go heal yourself. Please learn. Please understand. Have you know? But if you need support and coaching and help, and my opinion, I'm here for you. And so that's my service. Well, I, I think it's really important that you, you said a lot of good things. Code is penancy, right? You don't go to a doctor and then if it doesn't work, you don't blame the doctor. It's just like a relationship. If there's something bad in a relationship, it's two people, you know? So maybe you have to look at within yourself and say, oh, maybe I'm the issue. Maybe I'm not doing the work. Maybe I'm not, I'm not parking far away, right? It's, we, we put so much on other people uh, to, to get away with not taking accountability and responsibility for ourselves. You and I are not blaming people. People haven't learned. They don't think they don't, they don't think to stop. Look, I think to park far away because of my mother, but you could fit fitness in and not join a gym by walking steps and parking in the, across the street, but don't blame yourself. Don't blame or judge. God will be the judge here. We're just, you know, there's just, there's plenty of things you can do to be self-sufficient. And not all of us have learned, but your show, I have a broadcast, my other services, I have a weekly broadcast, a YouTube channel called TMS Roundtable. You can see right now, I've got like 250 broadcasts of people healing from everything from soup to nuts, lots of education. And I think nowadays we're all about self-learning and going on Dr. Google, learning everything. And then some of us don't want to do it alone. Who wants to go? Who wants to heal alone? It's scary. And so like you hold hands, I hold hands. Exactly. And it, together we make a difference and together we, we empower each other, you know, but you have to do the work. You have to be able to stay. Okay. It's like you said, doc, you know, with financial stuff, if you're not good at it, then hire somebody. You know, that's why we have all these in individuals and services out there. It's oh, if we it's, can't do it, they're there for us to show us the way, to guide us. We're not there to budget our books and say, okay, well, you can only, you know, they're going to guide us and say, you know, you can't do this is out of the books. You know, no. you, but I mean, society today has put so much blame on ever, everybody else except for themselves. Yeah. it's like that with yes. politics. It's like that with religion. It's like that with, uh, with schooling, educating, it's always somebody else's fault. It's always somebody else that didn't do it for us. We're saying today on this, on this episode, do it for yourself. Take the steps. Yeah. yeah. The tools are there. The information is there. The research is there. If you guys would like to know more about dog, like reach out, connect. And if it's not a good fit, it's okay. We're not going to be offended and say, you know what, you're, Miss Liz, your, your tea time's not for me. I don't, 
okay, well, there's somebody else that there's another platform, you know, Doc has her own platform. So maybe if you're looking for a deeper understanding and healing in that, check out her platform. I'm not going to be offended, guys. I'm going to be, yeah, let's do this together. Yeah, we're on your side. We're on, we're on your side. <laughs> we're not here to blame no and complain. We're no here to help you. No sides in our game. Nobody fails in our game. Nobody no. fails. So we're we're almost done here. So I got a couple more questions for you, Doc. And they're a little bit more on the private side. So you gave me the word relentless for yourself. Why that word relentless? Because I guess I guess I'm relentless about helping people um, get out of pain. And but sometimes they're not ready. And um I want them to get better more than them. They say when the student is ready, the teacher will come. And they say when the student is very ready, they don't need a teacher. And I think um, that relentlessness is just really, really wanting people to. And it probably comes from my childhood. My, I couldn't help my mother and I want to help you. People have to be ready. Yeah. So I put that relentless and relentlessness in, in parentheses of just like it, it's it's a way that I, I learn to maybe be balanced and calm down and maybe be calmly and gently relentless. <laughs> Be passion, right? The passion comes yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you also gave me the color purple when I asked you what your favorite color was. Why purple? Uh, it's a healing, it's a healing color. Purple's a healing color. And I've always loved it. I've always loved it. Something about the color purple. Yeah. That's the first time I've heard somebody say that it's a healing it's a, color. It's a healing color. Green is a healing color and purple is a healing color. Absolutely. If you were to ask anybody or not. I'm not arguing. <laughs> okay. Well, it's I my, like it. It's my <laughs> healing color. It's my healing color. <laughs> I like it. So do you have any upcoming events in that that we can get out for you before we wrap up? Well, actually, no. I'm just a simple doc, you know, mom and pop doc. And I have my show. I broadcast also every week. It's very exciting. I meet amazing people who have healed and doctors who talk and scientists and authors and um, no, no, there's nothing big coming up. It's just um, waking up every day and being grateful. And I'm just thrilled. I mean, you had to schedule me like six months ago. That shows how busy and how amazing you are. And I'm in awe. I'm in awe to be like, like sitting here with you. You're just really so professional and your social media is amazing. And, you know, you're on the ball. And I am really, really honored to be in this little safe room, this place with you, Miss Liz T. And you're so clever. And see how you took, you turned your trauma and drama into something so powerful. And everyone can do that. Everyone, no one's a victim of their trauma. And everyone can look at their trauma and say, well, that was my experience. Okay, that was then. I might be scarred, but that also means I've worked hard. You've overcome adversity. And so have I, we took our adversity and turned it into something powerful, something creative. And everyone can do that. No one is a victim of their childhood, of their trauma. I know how bad trauma can be. We live in a crazy, crazy world, but there's hope, there's belief, there's repetition, there's the ability to heal. There is healing on all fronts. Absolutely. So if anybody would like to reach you, how can they reach you? And for the audio listeners, can you spell out your website? Yeah, this is it. Uh, D-R-T-O-V-A-H. You can, you can uh, click on that. It comes up a little letter and you can email me and I'll send you. You can say, Doc, I want resources. Um, I, I'm on WhatsApp. We use, we're big on WhatsApp in Europe and all over because we want to connect to people all over the world. So I'm on WhatsApp. It's an international. It's a it's a um, phone app for free as long as you have internet, and we can speak internationally and we can talk. We can WhatsApp video, but I Zoom. Like I give everyone a complimentary call if you want to just talk with me personally about what you're going through. And um, you know, nowadays everyone can find anyone. Call Miss Liz. She'll give you my email. <laughs> That's what and I do. I like, like connect people. I connect the dots, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, you are you're a bridge. You're a bridge. <laughs> I love connecting. That that is what I live for, guys. Uh, I'm a passion person to get 
anybody connected if you want any connections or anything like that. And Doc, I really want to thank you for reaching out and, and being a guest on Tea Time because your story makes a difference, uh, you know, and you bring some good educational content to the table. So for any of the listeners out there, they would like to know more, please check her out, check out her website, uh, you know, check out her services uh, and have that conversation and maybe have her as a guest on, on her, on your podcast or your show or uh, channel. Uh, Cause I know some people have channels, some have podcasts, some have talk shows. So all of that good stuff. And we will be back tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with a returning guest from season three and four. And she'll be here for season five. And we're going to be talking about the importance of literacy for humanity with children's books, because we think that uh, humanity has a long way to go, guys. And through literacy and storytelling, we're going to make a difference. And we're going to serve some real life stories and tea and words and all that good stuff on Tea Time with Miss Liz. So until 7 p.m., I will wish you guys all a good afternoon, a good evening. And if you'd like to know more about Miss Liz, just check out Miss Liz's websites and platforms. And I'm just a cup of tea away for all of you guys out there. Until then, I'll see you at 7 p.m. with the second Tea Time of this week. Thank you. Bye.